So now we've got all of our infrastructure set up, we can go ahead and start installing our applications. So just to cap, uh, recap, we've installed our virtual server host machine. We've now got a virtual server guest machine that's running Small Business Server 2008. We've got a guest machine that's running Windows Server 2008 R2 and SQL Server 2008. And we've got a guest machine that's running Windows Server 2008 R2 and that's set up to run remote desktop services or terminal services. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to install SAP Business One and we're going to do that on our virtual server that's running SQL Server 2008. So I've downloaded SAP Business One 8.81 so I'm using uh, the pre-release version of Business One 8.81 and I've put that on my SQL Server machine. I've just put the folder on my desktop. So I'm going to go and open up that folder and then I can choose the auto run function. Now this is basically duplicating exactly what's going to happen is if I had inserted a DVD uh, into the DVD drive or if I had an ISO file and I'd mounted that ISO file the same as I did with my other applications. So what do I want to install here? In the first instance I want to install the server so I'll say next and what components do I want to install? Well I'm going to do a full installation here so I'm going to leave full selected and I'll say install. It's going to ask me for administrator permission because it's going to make some significant changes. It needs Visual C++ runtimes installed so I'm going to allow that to install. So it takes a couple of seconds for that to happen. And then once that's started it, it goes ahead and loads up the install shield wizard for our business one server tool. So I'll say next. I'll put in my user ID. And I'll say next. Alright, now one of the things I like to do when I do my server tools uh, and a matter of fact when I do all of the sub installation processes I always like to do a custom install it gives me total control over everything that's going on in the install procedure. I'm going to accept the default location and in this instance I want to install the mailer because I've got a full virtual implementation going on here a full company that has its own mail system and everything so I'm going to be able to show and demonstrate every aspect of SAP Business One utilizing this infrastructure. So I do want the mailer loaded. So I'll say next. Now it's asking me for my uh, site user. This is the B1 site user that you'll be familiar with. So create a password for the B1 site user and remember what that was because you're going to need that later. Particularly if we decide to install the mobility components as well. So I'll pop that in there and away it goes. My server tools is now uh, up and running and I'll choose finish and that's my server tools is now installed. So the next step is going to go in is going to install the actual server components. So it's going to create my databases uh, and load up all the necessary content for that. So I'll say next again in my name. SAP and I'll say next here and once again I'm going to do a custom install I'll say next I'll leave the default it's automatically picked up that I am running on SQL Server 2008 which is as we said is a supported database platform so I'll say next and it's detected my server name which is fine which is OEC SQL Server and I'll put in my SA user ID and my password that I created when I installed SQL Server. And I'll say next, it validates that. And then I'm going to come in here and choose which of the demo databases that I want to have loaded up. So for my purposes, I want the US and the Australian database. Uh, and then that's pretty much everything that I need to specify. So I'll say next and next and the installation is now going to go ahead so I'm going to pause the recording for a second whilst this installation runs through and then we'll come back at the end of this
So you can see the SBO common database is installed and now it's going in and it's going to create and populate the US demo database and then because I selected it, the Australian demo database as well. And here's our Australian demonstration database being loaded up for us right now. So our help database has been loaded and now it's populating all of the add-on cabinet files into the database. And as soon as that's finished, it automatically triggers the installation for the server components of the remote support platform. So I'm going to go ahead and say uh, next. I'm going to do the server installation, which will install the remote support platform um, server components, as well as the agent console, all on this one central computer for me. I can then go and I could do a client installation are uh, the same as I am going to go and do my client installation for SAP Business One on my terminal server machine. So I could demonstrate both SAP Business One and the remote support platform from that machine. I'll just say next. And again, it's going to ask me for my uh, database server, and that's this local machine, which is OEC SQL Server. Of course, you'll put in whatever name uh, you've created for yours, my database user ID. And then I'll also need to go in and I'll say next. Create my admin user password. And I'm just going to keep all of my passwords at the same password just to make things easy for me to remember. And my email address. It's going to be Richard at oecomputers.com because again remember I own that domain name so I can use that and I've got my mail server set up so this is all going to work uh, exactly as expected as it would in a live company scenario and I'll say next and next and the uh, remote support platform is now installing and that's completed. Now I can launch the agent console if I want to, but at this point in time, I'm not going to do that. So I'll untick that and say finish. And our installation of the SAP Business One and all the server components is now done. So what would be a great idea um, right now um, is to go in and so now that all those components are installed, what I want to do is I want to install the SAP Business One client on my SQL Server machine as well, uh, because I like to have the client installed on the SQL machine. That way I can do all of my testing and everything, all of my upgrading and updating on the SQL machine using a local connection between the client and the server on the same machine, so it's much, much faster. So. I can go here and I can say previous. Now I can install the client from this, the CD or I'm able to go out to the client installation location that has been created by the server install and install it from there. In this case, I'm just going to install the client and which optional components do I want? Well, I want the SDK. I do want the data transfer workbench. And then I can also select the Microsoft Outlook integration add-on as well if I want to. So I'll just select that and I'll say install. Again, administrative permission is required, so it's just prompting me for that. And our Business One client setup routine starts up. I'll say next. Next, I'm going to accept that, accept that default location, accept the default menu structure. Now, it's going to ask me for the license server name and the port. So what might be a good idea to do right now is to just quickly go and start the service manager and then to go in to the license manager and start that up. Now, here's a tip. One of the things you'll notice, see how I can't actually start the license manager from here? 
Well, the reason for that is because you actually have to start the license manager as, um, as an administrator. So what you might want to do uh, is go into the service manager, right click on that and choose run as administrator. Now that I've done that, you'll see that if I go in, I've now got the ability to choose the license manager. I can say start when the operating system starts uh, and I can accept that. So my license manager is running my license server name. Now I can either put in an IP address or a machine name. Uh, if you're sure your IP address isn't going to change, you can use that. Me, I'm just going to use my machine name. And the other thing you need to remember as well is with the Windows firewall, whatever port you specify here, remember you're going to need to open that IP port on the Windows firewall plus one. So this is port 30,000. So the ports we're going to need to open up on our firewall are 30,000 and 30,001. So I'll say next. And we'll let that installation go ahead and run. So our SDK is installed and now it's going and it's doing the installation for the Business One client. So the business objects components are also now loading up. So this is all of our necessary components for our uh, Crystal Reports runtime and also our Crystal Reports designer. Now you'll probably get a couple of error messages like the one I've got here. It's just telling me that Microsoft Excel is required um, but not installed. That's okay because I'm not going to run Excel Reporter on my SQL Server. So I can just say okay to that. And my Business One client's now installed and you can see, there you go, I have uh, my Business One icon on the desktop. So I'll say finish. And what you can do now is you can go ahead and you can start up the SAP Business One client for the very first time uh, and just double check that everything's running as expected. Now you've done that, the best thing to do is to go and generate a license key for SAP Business One for your demonstration installation. A couple of the other components are also going to load up for me now because don't forget when I specified what I wanted installed, I wanted to have my SDK installed, my data transfer workbench and my Outlook integration add-on. So, um, you know, the first comp part of the installation is loading up all of the DI components, then the client, and now we're going through installing the SDK, the DTW, and so on. So I'll go through this process as well, just for completeness. Let's say next, do a custom install. And I'll take all of my samples as well as my DI server samples, so that's all good. So that's all loaded, so I'll say finish, and now the DTW will load. DTW is loaded successfully. So next component will be my Outlook integration. And this is the Outlook integration standalone setup. Now I've got an error here that's coming up with this. So I'm going to need to debug this error. So I'll come back and let you know exactly what the error was that was causing this to occur. So that's now finished. All my components are loaded. So I'm going to now cancel out of the install. I'm going to run SAP Business One for the very first time. Um, but what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll show you that in our next session when we're going to go through and we're going to install our client on our terminal server machine.